What caused Moses' face to change colors? A good man of Shabbos, my dear friends. This week we read Parshas Chukas. The Medrash tells us that God taught Moshe Rabbeinu the laws of Tuma and Tara, the impurity and how to become pure again. And there are many different laws about what makes a person impure? How do you become pure again? But when he got to the teaching of when a person becomes impure by being in touch with a dead body, with a corpse, Moshe Rabbeinu asked God, how will this person become pure again? And God didn't answer. Says the Medrash at that moment, Moses' face changed colors. Moshe. He was very disturbed. And later on, when God, when it came to the laws, what we learn in this week's portion, about the red, the red heifer, para aduma, Hashem told him, this is how he will become pure again. So what does that mean? What bothered Moshe Rabbeinu? And why didn't God answer him right away? So to understand this, what is impurity in the more spiritual sense? Impurity is something that is a lack of godliness. Sometimes people get a lack of a little godliness. They are connected in many other ways and there is ways of reconnecting. But when a person reaches impurity of a corpse, a dead body, meaning this is something that disconnects the life altogether. It says, When you're connected with God, this is when you are alive. So the impurity of the dead body represents something, someone who is totally disconnected. And this is what bothers Moses. How can you ever reconnect a person who is totally disconnected? God didn't answer him right away. But when he get to the laws of Paraduma, he told him, Zot chukat ha-Torah. This is the law of the Torah. A law of chukah represents something which is beyond logic. There is some time, there's some connection that we have with God that goes beyond logic. It is an essential connection. And how does this law of Paraduma answer this question? How is this connected with purifying a person from that low level of impurity? It is because the para, the laws of the red heifer represent something much, much deeper. We see it in one of the examples that the details about the laws of the para. It is different than all other sacrifices. All sacrifices are done in the temple. This is done, done outside of the temple, outside of the camp altogether. The other thing is, when the, the one, the Kohen who deals with the red heifer, which comes to later purify people, he himself becomes impure. So the message here is that when a person is ready to give himself to give, to sacrifice himself in essence, his situation, his connection with God, to go outside of the temple in order to go and save another Jew. This brings out the essence of the soul, the essence of the neshama that can never be disconnected, that part that can never be disconnected. It was in Thailand, in the Chabad house, it was once an Israeli speaker came to celebrate the Passover. And he came there, they told him it's a big Seder taking place. And he came there, there was indeed thousands of people. There was a place, thousands of people. There was, it's impossible to speak to thousands of people. And obviously in Passover, you don't speak with a microphone. And what did they do? He sees how people, they lift up signs now is the time to drink the first cup, the second cup, eat the matzah, and do the mitzvahs. 
And then he sees how the people who were there were not religious. They pick up, they take out their phones, they take pictures. And he was very disturbed how those people desecrate the holiday. And he was thinking to himself, is this is really what it's about? Coming, celebrating a Passover with a Seder and, and people acting like this? And it bothered him. At the end of this Seder, the rabbi and a few, and all of the, bo the boys that came to help out, the Chabad boys, went to make their own Seder in their homes. So he was walking together with them, and he asked the, the question to one of the boys. And the boy says to him, I don't understand your question. These people just performed the mitzvah of the Torah. They ate the matzah, drank the wine, the mitzvahs that the Torah tells us to perform on Passover. What happens after? That's another thing. Of course, we have to work on it also. And that really changed his whole outlook. What it means to go down, even if you have to sacrifice from your own comfort, go outside of the camp and reach out to people that are on the outside and that are temporarily impure. And you go and you bring them in. You sacrifice from yourself to help others to get in and to get connected to Hashem. This type of connection comes from Moshe Rabbeinu. That is why this mitzvah of Parah Hashem said to Moses, Lechat, only to you I reveal this part. Because this is a connection with God that goes beyond the logic. This is what we should take from this parsha. The Rebbe guides us to go and reach out to our fellow. And when we do this, our own connection with God gains its fullest strength connecting to the very essence of the soul. And together, we will bring the coming of Mashiach very soon. Have a good Shabbos.